We need to be compassionate to ourselves and our world certainly needs our compassion. And so we are so grateful to you, Imam Jamal, in, in this celebration of Ramadan for you and those of your faith that you're willing to be with us and to share your wisdom mm -hmm. with us. We offer, we offer our compassion to you as you speak, and we receive from you the wisdom that you have for us. Um, I invite anyone who wishes to, as we listen to Imam Jamal, to put any questions or any comments that you have in the chat, um, which you'll know where that is on your screen. He'll be able to see those and, uh, and respond as he is able to respond. And we will treasure this next half hour. There are so many things that we could be doing in the world tonight. And here we are with one another. Some of us, we know one another, some we don't. But we're giving each other the gift of time, the gift of listening, and the gift of our compassionate presence. So thank you for being here with Alignment. And thank you, Imam Jamal, for sharing your wisdom and for sharing your heart with us. We welcome you. Uh, thank you so much, Sister Barbara. And thank you so much to these, as I always say, to these rectangles of love. <laughs> and I always uh, want to explain where that comes from. It comes from a beautiful utterance by Rumi, the 13th century sage, who uttered, oh, please come out of the circle of time and enter the circle of love. So thank you for being here. Your presence is a blessing. The topic, yes, is, is, is compassion. And of course, compassion is a divine trait found in all traditions and also in the precious teaching of Islam. I'm not saying that Muslims are following that. I'm not saying non-Muslims are following that. But amazingly, it exists. The, the mandate to be compassionate with oneself and with others in every single tradition. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, the entire spiritual teachings of Islam is contained in the Quran. And the entire teaching of the Quran is contained in the first chapter called Surah Fatiha. That, that is the equivalent of the Christian Lord's Prayer. And the entire content of that first chapter, a small chapter, is contained in the Basmallah. This is the invocation that opens virtually all of the 114 chapters of the Quran. And I mentioned this in a previous video. The words are Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. In the name of God who is boundlessly compassionate, infinitely merciful. And when a Bedouin asked the Prophet Muhammad, tell us more about this invocation. And the Prophet Muhammad said, this is a secret to life. Be compassionate with yourself and be compassionate with others. So now, a little bit more explanation. Why is this divine vibration of mercy, gentleness, compassion so powerful? And amazingly, in a number of traditions, the same metaphor is used. Something we are very used to in the Northwest, the metaphor of water. There is nothing as soft and yielding as water is, yet for overcoming the hardest, the most insurmountable, there's nothing as powerful as water is. It can wash away continents. And then wherever water falls, life flourishes. So the meaning is, if you go beyond the metaphor, that this divine trait of mercy, gentleness, compassion is filled with raw, authentic strength. And it is also life bestowing, life affirming. Which is why the Prophet Muhammad said, if kindness or compassion was a thing of the created world, there, was, there is nothing that could be more beautiful than that. If kindness, gentleness, compassion, was a thing of the created world, there is nothing that could be more beautiful than that. 
And there's one of my roommate, if I remember, how should spring bring forth a garden on hard stone? Become earth. So you may grow flowers of many colors. For Jamal, you have been a heartbreaking rock. Just once, for the sake of experiment, become earth. How should spring bring forth a garden on hard stone? Become earth, so you may grow flowers of many colors. For you have been a heartbreaking rock. Just once, for the sake of experiment, become earth. So now, why should I be gentle with myself? Compassionate with myself? Will the sages say, Jamal, you have no idea who you are, where you come from, and where you're going. We are in a total state of extraordinary, un, you know, untold bewilderment. Which is why, you know, Rumi uttered going into a trance, sell your cleverness and buy bewilderment. Sell your cleverness and by bewilderment. You know, I love that fictional story of the mullah, who is a fictional character, 13th century, through whom many truths are conveyed. So here he is in the tavern. It's all allegorical. Drinking and drinking and drinking. He's an intoxicated. He's in the tavern drinking. It's four in the morning. He stumbles out, walking the streets aimlessly. And a policeman accosts him and says, Sir, who are you? Where are you going? Where did you come from? And the mullah says, sir, if I knew the answer to all those questions, I would be home already. We have no idea. Well, we think our holy books can give answers. They can. But you know, they don't come with footnotes. And we fight over them. There is God. But God is such a mystery. God is invisible. Rumi says, what is this? The lover visible? The beloved invisible? Whose crazy idea was this? Rumi says, yes, I understand the metaphor. We have shown you the dust, but concealed the wind. We have shown you the dust, but concealed the wind. A verse in the Quran says, Allah is closer to you than your jugular vein. Allah is outside of you and inside of you in your heart. Total bewilderment. What does that mean? That's why I love the saying, the Zen saying, trying to understand the invisible world is like using a bamboo stick to measure the depth of the ocean. Using a bamboo stick to measure the depth of the ocean. And by the way, if you study Buddhism, it was this bewilderment that motivated the Buddha to search for answers. What was his question? His question was, why would a mother want to give birth to a child? Why would a mother want to give birth to a child who would inevitably grow old become sick and die. Why would a mother want to give birth to a child? Would inevitably grow, become sick, grow old and die? And that motivated him to find answers. Okay, my friends, so what do we do? The Islamic mystics, they say, be gentle with yourself. Be compassionate with yourself. So I want to introduce some techniques. And I'm looking at the time also. I don't overdo the, go over my time. Something I had mentioned in a previous video with uh, alignment, sacred naming. Can I establish a relationship of compassion, mercy, love, gentleness with myself? I repeat, can I as a spiritual practice, create a relationship rooted in compassion, love, 
mercy, gentleness with myself because every relationship outside of myself is a reflection of the relationship I have with myself. If I'm not able to be gentle and compassionate with myself, I can never be gentle and compassionate with others. I may know the technique, but the varnish will not hide the grain. The varnish will not hide the grain, as they say. So I remember, I remember as a child, uh, my father and my mother told me, son, what is a term of endearment you'd like to use with your name? That if you use that term of endearment, you will feel a wave of mercy come over you. Because the truth is, we talk to ourselves a lot. A lot. Observe yourself. And sadly, much of the talk is negative. So make a spiritual intervention at those times by using a term of endearment. My grandfather, who was a spiritual teacher, he used to call himself brother. So I call myself since childhood, brother Jamal. Not just the word brother, which is a term of endearment, but also the tone of the voice has to be gentle, compassionate. It has to reflect that mercy and gentleness. So if I get angry, frustrated, or sad, I immediately tell to myself, but Brother Jamal, it's okay if I'm, let's say I'm very angry. Jamal, please, Brother Jamal, uh, but Brother Jamal, please restrain yourself. We'll talk about this later, but now just restrain yourself. But Brother Jamal, the moment I say, but Brother Jamal, with the tone of mercy, the entire vibration of the circumstances change for me. My conversation with myself changes. I feel a wave of mercy come over me. I'm able to practice self-restraint. And it, it leads to a lot of creative possibilities. So I encourage you to choose something that is a term of endearment. Can you think of something like, oh, sweet one, oh, darling, oh, beloved one? What would you call yourself? Just give me one or two examples. Another practice in the Islamic mystical tradition, in the Sufi tradition, is to be gentle and compassionate with our difficult feelings. You know, it's a world of opposites. High is defined by low, long by short. There's sorrows, there is joy. It's a world of opposites. Some suffering is in inevitable. We'll have difficult feelings. Ah, and then in the holy books it says, in the Quran also it says, all feelings come from divinity, which means, the sages explain, that all feelings are sacred. I repeat, all feelings are sacred. My hate, my anger, my frustration, my sorrow, these are just vibrations begging my attention. And the sages from all traditions say, when they're coming up in me, these difficult feelings, they're begging to be acknowledged. They're begging to be held. They're begging to be healed. And they're begging to be integrated. That is how I become a more developed, complete, evolved human being. Carl Jung, who studied many Eastern traditions, Carl Jung said, you don't become enlightened by just focusing on your light. You become enlightened by also focusing on your shadow. Oh. Carl Jung said, would you once in your life have the courage and the grace to kiss the demons and dragons within you? That is how they turn into a prince or princess. Which is why, you know, Rumi, he exclaimed, the dark thought, the shame, the malice, greet them at the door laughing. Each one has been sent as a guide from beyond. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, greet them at the door laughing. Each one has been sent as a guide from beyond. That wonderful Christian mystic, 
Kahlil Gibran from Lebanon. You know, he wrote, the more that sorrow carves into your being, the more that sorrow carves into your being, the more joy it can contain. Mm -hmm. But here's a very important rejoinder or a reminder from all the mystical traditions. The Sufis say, Jamal, don't run towards pain and suffering. Don't run towards difficult feelings. Just don't run away from them. I repeat, don't run towards difficult feelings or suffering. Just don't run away from them. You know, in, in German philosophy, I forget the name of the philosopher. He says, you know, if you do this work of being present with your difficult feelings or your suffering and do it little by little, if you do it little by little, it leads to a quantum jump. And again, little by little, again, a quantum jump, again, little by little, again, a quantum jump. But he says it's like going through a deep, dark forest. But keep on going, little by little. As the Americans say, keep on trucking, keep on trucking, keep going. As you keep going to the deep, dark forest, half the time you're going inside the forest, but the other half, you're coming out of it. Half the time you're going inside the forest, the other half you're going out of it. So my friends, I really recommend a practice which I share in every single class I do. I've been teaching classes since 1980, 19, well, actively since 1992. Very continuously, almost every day, uh, very short breaks. I always introduce this practice of sacred holding. It takes a long time to understand that and to practice that. So I will just mention it, but please look it up in the YouTube, sacred holding. What is it? It's about the fact that all feelings are sacred and there's bound to be difficult feelings. And the, the difficult feelings are begging us to connect with them, to kiss them, as Carl Jung said. And how do I do that? So let's say I, I feel anger. Immediately, remember, sacred naming, I talk to myself, Brother Jamal, please don't overreact. We'll, we'll deal with this. Please don't overreact. I'll help you. So I, I restrain myself. But at the earliest opportunity, I deal with this difficult feeling of anger. And what are the steps? I ask myself, I do it for one minute, five minutes, half an hour, depending on my time. So this is sacred holding. I will ask myself, but Brother Jamal, what is it you felt or oh, you felt anger? Okay, I give you permission to feel the anger. Feel it. It's for purposes of healing and integration. So I, I allow myself to feel that feeling. And by the way, how do I know I have that feeling of anger? It's because I feel a sensation in a part of my body. Sadness. How do I know I'm sad? I feel a physical sensation in a part of my body. Ah, so number one was giving myself permission to feel that feeling. Step number two was, Brother Jamal, can you locate that physical holding? You call it anger, but where do you feel it? Here, here, where do you feel it? Locate it. Step number three, when you locate it, let's say I find it right here. Brother Jamal, just be present with it. Hold it like you'd hold a loved one. Remember, these difficult feelings are begging to be, as Carl Jung said, to be kissed. Just be with it. No need to fix it. No need to analyze it, but a great need just to be present with it. If it moves, move with it. But just be with it. That's a, that's a difficult part. Simply being present with it. I acknowledge it, I honor it, I begin to alchemize it because I'm present with it. After spending some time with it, you can ask it questions. A question like, do you have a message for me? Is there a secret you want to share? It's not that I'm expecting an answer. The answer might come. It might come much later, but just respectfully asking that question. Do you have a message for me? 
Is there a secret you want to share? And just be with that, but really listening. And the last question might be, how may I love you? It's begging to be loved. It is love, the vibration of love, that will heal it. How may I love you? And just be with it. And the last step is breathe through it. Just breathe through it. Wherever you've located it, I said it was right here. I'll just breathe through it. And that breathing in and out through that physical holding, it integrates and transforms and alchemizes that difficult feeling. My anger, I know from my own experience, it transforms into an inner enthusiasm. My fear into a greater mindfulness. My sadness into a greater empathy. Okay, that's called sacred holding. So just be with that for a few moments. There's one more point I want to make and then do a short meditation. I'm looking at the time. I'll, I'll keep it very short. So just spend a few seconds just absorbing what I said. And now I would just want to explore what does it mean to be compassionate with others? Essentially, it is about being compassionately aware that I'm angry at that person's behavior, but that person's being is sacred. It's Christ nature, Buddha nature, Elohim nature. Compassion mandates me in dealing with an adversary, in making a differentiation between behavior and being. Like the great mystics say, when you meet an adversary, an enemy, it could be in your family, it could be outside your family, do what is right. Protect yourself. Don't allow yourself to be abused. Take the right action. But Jamal, as you take the right action, remember, keep in mind, know that you are angry at their behavior, but their being is sacred. It's Christ nature, Allah nature. Just keeping this differentiation, discernment in my mind and heart, as I take the right action, has the power to shift heaven and earth. So, it's part of my ministry to deal with those who are, you might say, adversarial. Islamophobic, anti-Semitic, homophobic, misogynistic. So, I just want to say, with them, I like to share what uh, the Sufi mystics call sharing three cups of tea. The first cup of tea is listen. An enemy is someone whose story I have not listened to. I remind myself of that. An adversary is someone whose story I have not listened to. And what is listening? I love Rumi's metaphorical description. He says, Brother Jamal, listening is like putting your, putting your head on the person's chest and sinking into the answer. Metaphorically, it's like putting your head on the person's chest and sinking into the answer. So when I meet an adversary, I ask myself, Brother Jamal, are you really listening? Or are you already formulating your defense? Remember, an enemy is someone whose story you have not listened to. That wonderful words of Alexander Solzhenitsyn, that uh, Russian dissident, oh, only if it was so simple. He says, if only it was so simple that there are some evil people out there and all you have to do is isolate them, separate them and destroy them. He says, alas, the line dividing good and evil runs through every single human heart. And who is willing to tear a piece of his or her own heart? The line dividing good and evil runs through every single human heart. 
Who is willing to tear a piece of his or her own heart? Okay, that's the first cup of tea. Listen. The second cup of tea is respect. And I've just dealt with that. Respect means reminding myself, I am furious, anger at their behavior, but their being is sacred. Take the right action. Take the right action. But as Jamal, as you take the right action, do not keep their essence, their Christ nature, Elohim nature, out of your heart. And just this differentiation, this subtle discernment has the power to shift heaven and earth. The third cup of tea is connect. Jamal, don't focus immediately on the differences, what this says, that says, your, your view about this. The primary work in overcoming polarization is to connect on a human level with the other. Can I share stories? Not because it's artificial, because we are human beings. That wonderful saying by that Christian writer, this universe is made out of stories, not atoms. This universe is made out of stories, not atoms. Can I connect in a genuine, humble, sincere way? Not because I want to bring them to my point of view, because I really sincerely, humbly want to connect as a human being with that other human being. And guess what happens? And I, this is, I know I can tell you from firsthand experience, whoever the adversary is, Islamophobic, this, that, if I connect with that person on a human level, and it requires humility, sincerity, persistence, if I'm able to connect on a human level, it becomes impossible, very difficult to dehumanize or demonize the other, no matter what the difference is. I found this continuously to be true. And moreover, magically, if I connect with the other on a human level, it creates a vibration, a, a sort of a, a capacity, a possibility of creative possibilities of collaboration. Like with those that have totally differed in some issue, but we have agreed to work together, collaborate on some social justice issue, as an example. For example, Habitat for Humanity. I've worked with people who are totally anti-Islamic, homophobic, this, that, but uh, uh, misogynistic, uh, anti-Semitic. But we have been able to connect as human beings and join hands together on social justice projects. Okay, but if I just be with that for a few moments, I had to, thought of doing a short meditation, but I've noticed time is up. So I better, I better look. I tell you what, if you have any questions, just unmute and ask me, please. That might be easier than me read it. Call of Compassion Northwest, Imam Jamal Rahman, and any topics like sacred naming, sacred holding, uh, heart meditation. I encourage you to do heart meditation. Ah, please ask me the question, similar to, Revel uh, oh, Valerie Kaur, yes, 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 yes. You know, the meditation I was going to do, uh, if you don't mind, let's just do it for maximum two minutes. Are you okay in doing that just for two minutes? Recommend this meditation. I use it in all my therapy from heroin addiction to incest to murder. And they say this is one that has really healed them. So if you don't mind, we'll do it. Just close your eyes. Focus on your nostril and simply be present with the in-breath and out-breath for a few moments. Feeling the breath as we inhale, and as we exhale, just this much. And now, just letting go of that. And this time, focusing on the physical heart, 
our heart has been yearning, thirsting to connect with us. If it pleases you, put one hand or other hand on the other hand and feel the heart. Feel a connection with the heart. And now, please be open to feeling the beat of the heart, connecting to the heartbeat. Some traditions say, spirit, divinity is the heartbeat within the heartbeat. And now, please listen with the heart to a, to a revelation from those mysterious realms where God or spirit, divinity says to each one of us, beloved one, spirit says, I cannot be contained in the space of the earth. I cannot be contained in the space of the heavens, but I can be contained in the space of the pure, loving heart of my devotee. See, the traditions say spirit is outside of us and inside of us, inside our heart, in the innermost chambers of our heart. Amazing that divine heart is inside human heart. Please just be with that mystery the boundless, infinite space of the heart. And now, planting words, vibrations of beauty into this boundless space. Like other holy books, the Quran says, to God belong the most beautiful names. When we praise God, God doesn't become holy, we become holy. The mystics suggest, as we focus on the boundless space of the heart, try these words. I love you. Plant these words inside the heart, unabashedly, with feeling. No matter how awkward it might feel initially, I love you. Or please help me to love you. I love you. Please help me to love you. Just focus on the heart and tell the heart, I love you. You can add other words. Please help me to love you. You can continue. Thank you. I'm so grateful. Even more words. Please help me. I need help. Please add anything else, but starting with, if it pleases you, I love you. And keep saying it into the heart space again and again and again and again. I love you. Please help me to love you. Thank you. Please help me. As we keep saying these words, these beautiful words, a most divine vibration filled with love, compassion, blessings, healing, empowerment, transformation is going from the tongue into the mouth, into the throat, into the chest, even deeper into the heart, even deeper into the hidden, even deeper into the hidden of the hidden, amazingly, astonishingly, blessing us, loving us, healing us, empowering us, transforming us.
And now, stop saying anything at all. Just become very still. And just be with the heart. Just be with the boundless space of the heart. I'll do the invocation, then coming into awareness at the end of the invocation. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah and gently opening the eyes. And so my dear friends, for me personally, for Jamal, for Brother Jamal, I find of all the practices I've done in my 74 years, the one I found most powerful is telling the heart, I love you in my meditation and in my waking hours, as often as I can remember just as often as possible telling my heart i love you that's number one and number two as often as possible touching my heart in especially in thank you oh you're so kind thank you thank you just the practice of touching the heart has had a deep impact on me okay my friends i've said a lot of things i'm so happy to answer any questions but I've gone way over my time. Those who want to leave, please feel free to leave. But if you have any questions, please do tell. Uh, I would rather you tell it to me uh, in speech. I just want to say I'm grateful. I now bookmarked your videos. So the, the one I gave everybody will help list all 60, I think 60 plus videos. Oh, great, great. So Thank you, Susie. Remarkable. So I'm just so grateful for Thanks. all the all that you fed us today i just I, I have no questions because i'm just absorbing everything that you have given i'm grateful thank you thank you so much are there others who have questions <clears throat> as we finish can i say something yes please, please. oh julian okay both julian and myself come from tasmania oh. for the jam up oh uh, it was uh Blessing, we, I got to hear you today. I always wanted to meet, meet someone who has coming from the Sufi tradition. I'm a, I'm a born again Hindu, if that makes sense. I see. Okay, but uh, I must compliment you. There's two things I noticed about how you present. Yes. One is you always repeat a sentence that's very good. It makes it very clear so that we get what you're saying. It's a brilliant way of teaching. I really admire that. And my it's really worrying now because I forgot the second thing I wanted to say, but I'll take excuse. Thank you so much. I, I, really, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your kind words. I appreciate that very much. But it's a blessing to meet you because I always wanted to meet a Sufi mystic. Thank you. Thank you, Sri. I'd just like to echo what Susie said and what uh, Sri said. Uh, my appreciation for this time you spent with us, Jamal. Um, some of the things you said brought a tear to my eye. Um, so it went, it went deep. And just quickly, I want to thank you for the email I received this morning from you. And You've I, look been to, I look forward to further, further correspondence later on. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Brother Julian. And I want to say your tears are holy. You know, in the Sufi traditions, they say those tears, because they're holy and they're so genuine, they <clears throat> water those invisible rose gardens. Mm -hmm. And the Rumi has a verse, he says, you know, please weep, weep like the water wheel, weep like the water wheel, so that sweet herbs may grow in the courtyard of your soul. Weep like the water wheel, so sweet herbs may grow in the courtyard of your soul. So may we, we men, like Sri and uh, you, Julian, maybe learn to cry whenever, whenever it's genuine, it's beautiful. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> and I would like to thank you too, Imam, for the gift that mm -hmm. you have given us. And I am so grateful for having seen all of your, many of your faces mm -hmm. and heard many of your voices. It makes me feel that we are a community 
And that is one of the gifts that alignment wishes always to give to all of those who come, community. We are together. We don't live together. We may not have met in person, but we are community bound by the spirit of compassion and learning and love. So I will hold all of you in my heart. I ask that you hold one another as well. And Imam Jamal, we thank you once again with great deep gratitude for your sharing. Thank you so much, Barbara, and heartfelt gratitude to you, Barbara, and all these rectangles of love. Yes. And we're all connected anyhow, you know, in spirit. That's right. We made this connection even deepen more with the passage of time. Yes. 